now. Uh, my name is Steve Remen, Epeyong with Susonde. I welcome you all to the practical class because a lot of people have been uh, requesting for the practical aspect of my video and YouTube presentation on PU Formal Academy. Looking at this, look at the topic here. Practical class on how to make or produce 22 uh, density of foam with incorporation of 20% of filler. Now, looking at my previous lesson, I did say that whether it is continuous process uh, formulation, uh, batch foam, uh, semi continuous process, the formulation is still the same. But there's what we call conversion factors especially for most of you who are doing box foam and this lesson will specifically benefit those that are doing a box foam Take a look at uh, this uh, formulation this is a formulation that is clearly stated here in part by 100 look at polyol 80 filler 20 80 plus 20 will give you 100 so polyol is in 100 now look at the water look at the methylene chloride look at the tin catalyst look at the silicon surface and look at the tdi at index of 112 this is at index of 112 index of 112 uh, let me state it here so that you will not be confused look at my previous lesson you will see how tdi index is uh, calculated this is an index of 112. 112. Let me write it boldly. Index of 112. And the hydroxide value was taken at 40. Assuming that what is stated in the polyol -all safety data sheet, the hydroxide value was 30. So look at my previous letter. You will now know how to calculate this. Now, the first thing is for you to look at your mole. This is the volume of mole. And we have to take a look at our mole. This is our mole. Look at this mold. From here to here is the width. From here to here is the length. From here to here is the height of the mold. So in that part per hundred, we are going to convert it so that when you pour your foam, coupled with the rising, everything will uh, get in here without um, getting without uh, overflowing and get poor at the end. You lose money. So take a look at this. This is the volume, the size volume. We first measure it in cm, 52 by 42 by 56 cm. Then we now convert it in meter in cubic volume. So we take it to the meter. This is the total uh, uh, volume of the mold in meter. Now for you to get the kg of the total material, that the total material of the mold require is you multiply this by this looking at the value meter cube time density m cube cancel m cube you have 0 0.12 times 22 density we have 2.6 kg 2.6 kg is the total raw material needed that will fill the mold in all these formulation that are being converted now we now look at the gas loss look at this i will uh, also uh, make a video on auto calculate gas loss how i arrive in this uh, mathematics now this is the 2.4 2.4 is taken from the molecular weight of co2 and that of water okay divide them that is co2 divided by water you have 2.4 in terms of their molecular weight multiply by the water in your formulation this is the water this is the water 3.7 plus mc divided by seven because one kg of water is equivalent to seven kg of the uh, mc in terms of blowing effect that's why you have this seven don't ask me why i arrived on this seven this seven was determined empirically by experience and a series of ideas over time now if you relate this rearrange it you end up having this 9.33 times you take kg of polyol here in your formulation into 100 multiply by that so our gas loss is 7.5 and you have to subtract this by your total part of that raw material you want to prepare 
Now you now use the kg divided by that figure. Look at it here. You have 0 0.02. This 0 0.02 is the multiplying factor of your polyol. Multiplying factor of your polyol. You now use it and multiply this one in part in part of that formulation 80 to 0 0.2 of amine catalyst now when you do that you have this now let's go for practical polyol is 1600 then you add filler of 400 looking at this i've had a filler that is 400 but 400 grams of it into 1600 gram of polymeric polyol which is a major raw material now this mix up speed it's about 1400 rpm look at it so you have to mix it very well the, the polyol and the calcium form polymer matrix you mix it mixing is in progress continue mixing I'm mixing it. Mixing is in progress. Mixing is in progress. Because we want the calcium carbonate and the polyol to form what we call the polymer matrix. That is to mix very, very well. If it doesn't look very well, it can also cause chemical interference by causing split and flat during production process. Then I've increased the speed. Now, this is the first mixing. Now, looking at this, if you look at our formulation, if you look at our formulation, the next thing we are going to add here is methylene chloride, MC. Look at MC is 42 grams. Look at MC here is 42 grams. I've measured the MC. It's 42 grams, then I will add it. No reaction. I will continue to mix again. Then we are through. The next thing is amine catalyst. This is my amine catalyst. Is um, amine catalyst is four mil. Look at it. I've added amine catalyst four mil. I added there. I will continue to mix. I keep mixing it. Now, the next thing is my silicon. If you look at this paper, silicon is 18 mils. I've added silicon into there. You know, if you look at my previous lesson, I think I've stated all these things, the rules, laid by some of these chemicals, the forming process. So go back to my lesson, and you see all of them clearly stated there. Now, the next one is my tin catalyst. If you look at my tin catalyst here in this paper, look at it here. Look at tin here. It's 3.9 mil. Now, this is a tin catalyst, 3.9 mil. I've added it here. Okay. I continue to mix. Then the last, remember as you are adding your water, look at water, water is 74. Look at water in the formulation. You are not using this one. We have already converted it to grams. This is 74 grams. So look at the water. Take a look at water. So the quantity required here is 74 grams. I've added it here into that mixture. 
what we are following. The practical is very, very interesting. So why can't you continue to subscribe for my channel? Share it on your notification bell so that whenever I upload a new video, you'll be notified. Now we are through with all the mixing. I supposed to be even continue mixing it, but this is a laboratory work. The reason I don't continue to mix is that the thing was flat on my first. So because it's a laboratory work, but even a large scale, whereby you have a very large volume to carry out, you more mix it. Now this is what I will do. I've added my TDI. TDI in the formulation, look at it. Is 946 grams. Look at the TDI here 946 grams. And if you look at this cup, we wear it in a required volume needed in that formulation TDI. That is student diisocyanide. What is in this content is 946 grams. Take a look at it. I'm going to add it here. No reaction. Okay. Okay. I keep staring. I keep staring. Then I will pour it into that box. Look, take a look at it. I pour it. The foams keep rising. Observe the rising. The foam keeps rising. For you that is good observers, take a look at it. The reason I include this paper is for easy removal. So that when the reaction are completed it will be easy for me to remove it from this uh, wooden uh, mold look at it the foam is rising 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 you see that volume that we calculated okay the foam is rising it's enough to carry this volume the foam is rising the foam is rising the foam is rising now look at the gas look at the rising uh, stage i've completed look at this okay this is what we call the healthy gas so the co2 this is the sign that the foam has released co2 after full rise so this is a typical practical laboratory uh, production of a foam density of 22 with 20 percent the calcium carbonate the calcium carbonate is optional you can add it you may not add it even the mc is also optional but if you are producing a foam without mc you only use part per hundred of water of 4.5 that is enough to give you that density because there is no mc but if you are including the MC, you have to also increase the index so that to balance the annex. So any moment from now, we will wait for curing. Then the next thing is to wait for some time. Okay, after that, we can remove it. See, the foam is cure. You look at it, the foam is cure. Then, let me see, this how we remove it from the mold. We remove the foam from the mold. Remove the foam from the mold. Okay. Look at the foam. Wow. That is very excellent. So this foam will stay for some a period of hours. But in the ideal condition, the foam has to stay for 72 hours. That is three days. But for the sake of laboratory work, so that you want to check whether this density and analysis meet up with what was desired to produce for your customer so you will not cut it if it does not you can now go back to the same analysis and varies two or three parameters okay until you get the required density that you desire to produce so any moment from now um we are going to cut it and check the density and you are going to see it in a, a subsequent video any moment from now time is that not interesting so this is a practical class 
you are all waiting for. So continue to like my page. I love you all. Bye. As we conducted the experiment, the practical class of the production of laboratory scale of the density of 22, according to that uh, formulation. So this is the foam sample. We allowed this foam cure properly for the set period of uh, 72 hours to allow the chemical reaction fully uh, completed. Now, looking at this foam, we now cut it into this size for the purpose of this lesson. That is why we make it in a small size or a smaller size. Look at the kg, 0.41 kg. Now, look at the cubic volume. That is the mass, the total mass of this foam sample is 0.41 kg. Now, look at the cubic volume, the meter cube, that the volume. That is, we take the dimension of the width, the length, and the breadth. Okay? We calculated to convert it to meter we have this so theoretically density equal to mass over volume so we use this value divided by the look at the density here you see the density now so in this form i'm going to apply it in a continuum process or a box form i don't need to do any adjustment because i intended we intended to formulate for 22 density the reason for that 22 though it was 21 formulation because of the incorporation of 20% uh, calcium carbonate, because it's added extra weight to the virgin foam. So after the complete curing, we now have 21.8, approximately 22. Is that not interesting? So this is how to formulate. Supposing I conducted this uh, calculated density, is, um, uh, the density become lower than expected. So I have to re carry out the practical until I have what was a uh, desire to produce. So continue to follow up so that you learn more about how to uh, produce or pay you foam in both uh, continuous process and semi-continuous process and that of a batch foam. This one was laboratory scale. Thank you my viewers. God bless you as you continue to share my video. Subscription is free. Thank you very much. Bye.